everyone, or oh, good afternoon, because the time is running. I'll try to make my presentation short, um, because I know we, we don't have, the, well, time is a uh, limited resource also. So I will try to save some time. Uh, yes, I am a politician, and I'm proud of it, because I'm, I feel that uh, we politicians take uh, very important responsibility for what the future of um, our next generation, generations will be. And I think that it is extremely important that we, politicians, women and men, will do our best to support sustainable development and we will support uh, our communities in uh, building up what we already heard about today. But I'm not only a politician, I'm also an activist. And I was born in the city, in a relatively big city of Krakow, which is in the south of Poland. And nowadays I live in another big city, even bigger city, which is the capital of Poland, Warsaw. So I'm, I'm rather the um, dweller of uh, big cities rather than eco-villagers. And let me, let me explain you why I became a green politician. It is really crucial to understand that what we have um, is it's all coming from the environment, whatever it is, resources like water, like fresh air. I'm always talking to people at the audience. What we need is first we need fresh air and what we do in the morning, we open our window and we get fresh air for free. Sometimes in big cities we don't get it anymore. And we fight for it now because it's getting low and lower quality. And in my hometown, Krakow, now there is a big fight for fresh air because people can't breathe anymore. So people of the 30s or 40s with their children, they go to streets to demonstrate as they did during the communist time and they fight again, again, and they fight again for the same purpose. I mean democracy and fresh air. Although they probably don't know that they're fighting for democracy. They probably think that they fight for fresh air only. So it's, it's obvious for all of us that we need egalitarian, uh, high quality, um, happy society to have economy. And we need good environment to have society. So it all goes up from the environment to the society and then to the economy. But what we hear from our colleagues, politicians, economy, stupid. So economy first, which is complete the opposite. So this picture would be the upside, upside down. Two of the main politicians in Poland, two of them right wing, one neoliberal, the other more of the social nas nationalistic. They say society or the environment. The other one, economy or the, the, the environment. So they say conflicts are there. And of course, everything is conflicted with the environment. So one day, a friend of mine from France, he is an MEP, member of the European Parliament, he said, well, it's not easy to be a green in Poland, and it's even more difficult to be a green politician in, in Poland. And I do agree, but still, we're trying. So it's, it is about the greening of, of our cities, because most of us in the European Union, we live in, in cities. 80% of the population lives in, in bigger and smaller cities and towns. But it is not only about technical, technological developments. It's not only about our sustainable mobility. It's not only about uh, energy system, uh, so infrastructure. infrastructure. It's mostly about democracy. So we, we're trying to show that 
democracy is very much related to environmental um, protection and it's very much um, uh, related to sustainable development. So you can see that one of the issues that we really strongly picking up is gender uh, equality, gender balance. It is really crucial that women take part in the, in the game that we heard about today, but not our game, men's game, but it has to be balanced, new type of game that we should uh, work uh, on together. It's also that we need information, proper access to information, public information is crucial to make good decisions. And participation in the, in the process of making decisions is as, as, as important. And we can see from Central and Eastern Europe especially that these elements are not there. We are not informed properly. We don't have participatory level sufficiently developed. It is our president of one of the cities which is very well known in Lithuania lately, Poznań, because of our hooligans, sorry for them. I don't agree with what they were saying and I apologize from, from Poland to the Lithuanian um, citizens. They are stupid, they are just stupid. Some of you probably don't know about the issue, so it's great that you don't know. And who knows what I'm talking about, they know uh, how terrible it was, but that's over. It was just um, some hooligans. So the, the president of Poznan, he decided to build this stadium a few years ago. And the stadium is, of course, very costly. It costs a lot of money. So the city went down with the budget under the red line. So there are too many expenditures, too much money spent. And then the president of Poznan announced that he starts uh, public uh, consultations on cuts because there is not enough money in the budget. So the society was invited to participate in the debate whether to cut on, on the health, on the environmental protection or uh, whatever, education. You can, you can imagine which uh, would be the most hit by, by, by cuts. So this is how this democratic process can be developed if we don't have strong local communities, both in the villages, in the small towns, but also in the, in the big cities. So we're talking about democracy. And it's also some common ground here between Lithuania and Poland, not only historical, but very recent one, which is nuclear power. Because I know that you were brave enough to say no to nuclear power in the public referendum. We still didn't have a chance to uh, vote on the issue. We didn't, have to, we didn't have a chance to say no to nuclear, but the public opinion is very much so. More than 50% do not want, uh, does not want uh, nuclear power in Poland. Why, why is this so crucial? It's not about nuclear. It's about democracy, stupid. It's about how we build our society. So it's not about the installation. It's not about investments. It's about how we build our society. So we call it energy democracy, which means that we all build up our democratic energy system, which means that we invest our own resources into um, energy system. For instance, like here, mm, insulating our houses, which means we produce megawatts. We produce energy which is saved, which is saving our pockets too. And you know, as, as a politician, I have to speak to people this language that they listen to. If I speak to them about saving Arctic, or if I talk to them about some animals in the forests somewhere in Africa or in, in Asia, 
they would tell me, yeah, that's nice, but we don't have enough money to, to uh, meet our, our needs. But if I speak to them about energy democracy, they would listen, because it's their, their interest. So this way we can open their, their minds, their ears, their eyes. So it is democratic, it is beneficial to, to, to people, and it gives us democratic control. Because it, it makes our situation better off. Why this corporacy of uh, coal, as you know, Poland is coal and uh, we, we are based on, on coal. That's what our prime, ministers, prime minister said a few days ago. Poland is, will be based on coal for the next decades. And I said, yes, on Russian coal because there is very little Polish coal available anymore. So it's becoming really pathetic what they're saying, that we are a coal-based country, that we are coaland. We are no longer coaland. So we have to not only improve our efficiency, but we also have to produce our own energy. But not with Polish coal, not with Russian coal. I don't mind Russians, I do mind Putin, which is separate thing society and the government. The same in Poland to some extent. Of course, not to that extent. Um, but still, it is crucial that we use Polish wind, Polish sun, Polish water, po Polish biomass, Polish biogas. This is Polish, these are Polish resources. And these are available for free for the next few billion years. You can see the benefits to the society, and you can see that I'm mostly talking about economic benefits, because people listen to that. People want jobs, people want lower bills, energy bills. People don't want to listen to me about environmental protection. Of course they do, but after listening to the first issues of economic uh, surviving, of social uh, benefits like, like jobs. And I talked to the coal miners a few days ago and I told them that they should be taken out to the sun after some time, of course. I'm not making a revolution, I'm trying to show them a transition period of several decades that they have to be ready to become solar panel uh, installers. They have to be ready to become wind, um, wind farm builders. And some of them already opened their minds to this idea because they know that they're going deeper and deeper under the ground. And they can, they can see that I'm right. Of course, they don't admit 100% that I'm right because I'm green and they are not. <laughs> but still, there is a communication already. So there is a democratic process, participatory process of discussion. And it is also crucial that we use our networks, European networks for that purpose, whatever it is, sustainable transport, energy democracy, uh, water uh, access. All these issues have to be done European-wide. So we have to use our European networks of cities, for instance, to develop our own systems, but with support of our, our other cities that have some uh, experience already. So we don't make, um, so we don't make uh, any mistakes uh, that, that does not have to be made. It is an example of our neighbor country, which is Germany. Of course, Lithuania is there too, but on the other side of the, of, of the border, there is Germany. Huge country, one of the biggest world economy. And you can see what's happening there. People take over control over the energy economy there. Because it is prosumers, so you producers and consumers at the same time, 
took over 35% of investment already in so this, this huge cake, which is billions and billions of euros, is already taken care of by citizens, by citizens' farmers, by smaller industry, like small and medium-sized uh, companies. Of course, there is still part of this cake taken by the big, like big four energy supplies. And you know what the situation is in our countries, in, the, in, in Lithuania, in Poland, and in, in other Central and Eastern European countries, that we are still um, very much into the monopolistic big corporations that, that take care of our uh, energy that we use. So this is a very good example how democratization of this system can be developed. And it may go the same way with other sectors, with transport. Like at the moment, I think next month, there will be a referendum in Berlin to take over greed, energy greed by, by the society. So re communalization of it because it was privatized but now they want to get it back because they see money they see there is a lot of money being taken away from the local community of Berliners so they want this money back so it's about democracy but it's also about uh, um, economic control and sorry and you can see the amount of energy produced so this, this is not the amount produced, this is the amount of energy installed. But this, to, to tell you what, what this amount means, because some of you may not know what it is, it is two times bigger than Polish energy system, coal-based. Because Polish energy, electric energy system is about 35 gigawatts of uh, electricity. This is more than 70, 72 gigawatts. So it's two times bigger than our coal-based system. So it's not hobby, as they say. It's a huge, huge business and huge sector. And because my family name is Swedish in Polish, so I'm very much looking at uh, Swedish uh, examples. And I'm very in favor of some of the developments uh, there. And one example is Malmö, is the city of Malmö which is very close to Poland, only the Baltic Sea is, is the, the distance. And we already take some of the uh, good examples from Malmö to Szczecin, for instance, to our um, city or near the, the seaside, um, where they develop sustainable development projects, but not only on ecological in, in ecological terms, but they also take social and economic issues into consideration, as sustainable develop, development should be. So they not only take citizens on board when planning, we were already talking about it uh, today, so that people may participate in deciding what they want. It's not like in Poznań that they are asked to cut but they are asked whether they want a stadium or not, whether they want more schools, more kindergartens, and, or, or, or stadium. And I asked uh, once citizens of, of, uh, of uh, Warsaw, a group of citizens of Warsaw, what they wanted, and there was nobody who said stadium. And there was 100% of people there in the room saying kindergartens, schools. So this is the democratic system as we, as we have it. So that's, that's the game we, we now at. Yeah, you, <laughs> I'm finishing. So it's, as you can see, there is technological development, but it's all about democratic participatory um, uh, process that people are um, uh, involved in. And it also gives an ethnic dimension minority dimension, so that everyone feels, feels uh, good in, in, in this, uh, in this uh, transition. So you can also see some other uh, developments. For instance, very in interesting developments could be food production, because city mostly 
can't produce 100% of food which is needed, 100% of energy which is needed. So what we can do, we can use cooperation between big cities and eco villages around the cities to produce energy for the city, to produce food for, for the city, to produce fresh air, fresh water. So there is a lot of areas of cooperation between big cities or bigger cities and smaller villages, eco-villages around it. And also it has a global, global dimension, which is global solidarity in terms of, uh, for instance, fair trade, so that, of course, we can't produce bananas in Poland yet, uh, but still climate change and so on, but still we have to import them. So then it has to be traded in a fair, fair way. And to distribute, to, to, to uh, promote these ideas, we also, as, as a Green Institute, we produce a um, bi-monthly magazine. This says happiness. So <laughs> you can see this is Warsaw. And well, this is probably on the on the roof of of the, of the one of the houses in 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 Warsaw that we produce uh, food, for instance. And it's it's coming, and it's not only because of of the crisis, but it's also because people want to live in a better quality um, standards. So we try to promote these ideas through this magazine, and as you can see. It is very controversial. <laughs> Even the covers of the magazine shows that it touches very much on the critical issues like, like diversity, ethnic diversity, uh, minority uh, issues, ecological transformation. So it all shows that we need some new, new dimension of, of, of uh, transformation which uh, needs new thinking, new action, new type of uh, activism. And it says we change our gray cities into green ones. And now Stuart stole it uh, from me a little bit, but I will make my show uh, also, because I think it's, it's really crucial to show that we, uh, I think it, it is, it is uh, a little bit uh, uh, chemicals in it, but still, I think it's really important to show what we stand for and to, to, to make it really happen. <laughs> it's really hot here, so I was <laughs> kind of lacking water, so sorry for that, but I hope uh, my ideas went through. Uh, uh, okay, so thank you.